Previously on Profit, my boss, Charles Grayson, trapped in a loveless marriage. He wants to be with my step monster, Bobby, but can't afford to leave his wife, Constance, and she just wants love, even if it's only Bobby pretending to be. I'm Eleanor Meacham. The woman of her dreams. Pete and Sykes are up to something, but what? I'm not in rehab to get sober. I am sober. I have been for two months. I'm not supposed to tell anyone. They're taking over Grayson and Grayson. Security. It doesn't exist in nature. All right, that's all. No animal is so arrogant as to ever feel completely safe. Only humans believe they can find assured well-being through design and technology. Some even believe it with a vengeance. Now, you're still on special assignment with um, Jim Prophet? Mm-hmm. Everything going all right? Fine. Oh, that's Mr. Prophet. We're late for a meeting with Charles Grayson. We'll talk later. Grayson and Grayson's relationship with the press lately has been troubled at best. One article after another, calling us deceptive, greedy, and indifferent to the future of the planet, blah, blah, blah. It certainly has had an effect on morale around here, not to mention stock prices. Hi. Kelly, you ready? Ready. Good. I think Mr. Prophet is right. We have a spy in the company. A reporter gathering information for a story. Swell. He or she modemed classified information out of our offices three weeks ago. It was sent to a secure mailbox on the net. The rumor is this mailbox is some kind of cyber safe house for reporters undercover. Coded messages go in and out. What they say and who they go to is encrypted. And what exactly did this reporter acquire from us? Hmm. Contrary to what we just told the shareholders, our next generation laptop is a total disaster. Gee, is that all? This will only send our stock plummeting 10 to 20 points. I mean, after this comes out, I might still be able to get a job wearing a hairnet and saying, would you like fries with that? Thank you. That will be all, Kelly. I don't normally drink before lunch, but I'd say today's a rather spectacular exception. Join me? No, thanks. Chaz, if you don't mind, I'd like to personally take point on this one. It's a security problem. Let Kelly handle it. Hmm. She'd like that. Why? She's the leak. You have proof? Oh, she came to us under a personal appointment of a friend of yours. Mr. Douglas Wentworth. I had her checked out. She's never worked security before in her life. But she does know Wentworth. They had an affair together in Tokyo. She was there working as a correspondent for the Tribune. Right after old Dougie had his little midlife crisis, chucked his company and joined the monastery. Had to take one last shot at me before shaving his head and donning his robes. Nothing like a monk with a grudge. Do we know her real name? Carol McKenna. How much do you think she has on us? Well, she wanted me to find that report in front of you. You can only imagine what she's really after. Yes, I can, Jim. I can imagine a holocaust of lawsuits and debt. I can imagine being eaten alive by bottom-feeding cannibals. I can even imagine prison. Unless you have a plan. Be careful of Jim Prophet. He's Chaz's golden retriever. And I can't say anything else or I'm gonna get fired. Look, if you tell me something in confidence about Mr. Prophet... I did. Okay. I guess I'll just have to figure him out for myself then. And I'll be careful, Mom. Let go 
both my hands. Why? So I can get my pantyhose off. Allow me. You know, I've been wondering since I started at G&G, &G, how can we get some positive press? Well, call me crazy, but I think I'm into something here. For a month, I've known who and what she really is. And for a month, it's been like this. Cars, conference rooms, and corridors. Ugh. One of the first things she said to me was, she doesn't love unless it's dangerous. If that's what she needs, that's what I'll be for her. Kelly Hunt, she works security. She must be new. How'd you guess? Well, she doesn't quite have the corporate look down. A little trashy not wearing pantyhose. I'll mention it to Joanne. How's Pete? Good. Coming back this week. And you're here to pick up some paperwork for him, right? How did you know that? Your briefcase is open and empty. God, I guess I can give up the idea of spying for my country. Are you sure you want to get involved in this? Pete just asked me to pick up something for him at the office. <laughs> She's got to be here to pick up paperwork on the takeover. I'm just trying to do what's right. I'm trying to be his wife. I know it's hard. There's a lot of angles in this game, Nora. I just want you to understand that I'm not one of them. I just want to be your friend, okay? Okay. Okay. Poor Nora. If she's confused now, just wait till Pete gets back and the takeover begins. That's when it's really going to get fun. I'd like to leave a message for Ms. Stokowski. One moment, please. All right, Ms. Stokowski, and your message, sir. If she calls in, tell her I think it's time we both moved on. Gail. Yes, sir? Can I see you for a sec? I think I've been riding you a little too hard lately. Pardon? I think you deserve a day off. But... No buts about it. You've earned it. As a matter of fact, you're not coming into the office on Wednesday. Is this really a day off, or something else well there is one small favor you could do for me it concerns a woman named betty greer Is the concept on time? Well, you're either born with it or you're not. So what do you got for me this week? G&G &G just acquired a tool and die company. A uh, paper trail indicates they had a little help from a U.S. senator. Acquisitions again. You're doing pretty well in that department. Well, I have what you might call an in. You're not keeping copies of this anywhere, your apartment, the office. Simon, this isn't my first hayride. You have my copies, my originals, and just to set your mind at ease, they swallow that little internet trail we left. They think I'm after a story on their new laptop. Maybe it's time you got out of this. I don't have nearly enough to publish, and you know it. Then step back. Get another angle on it. No, no, no. I'm too close. To what? To whom? Jim Prophet. Carol, this started dangerous. 
Now you're involved with this guy, we're crossing into the area of stupidly dangerous. I know exactly how to handle Prophet. He likes his women edgy, with a lot of dark corners so he can rescue them and control them. And if that's what he likes, that's what I'll be for him. Hey. Hey, good morning. Listen, I've been meaning to ask you. You know that dinner we've been talking about? You got something on profit? You know it's weird, I don't. And I still want to have dinner with you. So, how do you explain that? Jeff, I like you, really. But I need to draw a line between my life and my work. See you at work. See you at work. I was just leaving these for you. Oh, thank you. I'm running late. I'll see you. Bye. Did you get that car that I sent you? strangers and gain their trust. Father attached to embassy duty, family exposed to riots, border wars, and the occasional terrorist bombing. Uh, that's probably where you developed your appetite for danger, huh? You need to feel the knife against your throat, don't you? And what is it about those eyes? Why do I see something I almost recognize? Something I can't... Hello? Mama's back. Bobby, how are you? How'd it go? I tell you what, Jamie being so cross the board's popular wears a girl plumb out. I'm sure. Hold on one sec, okay? How's Constance? She took a lighter flight. But we're getting together here tomorrow. Make a little poetry. <laughs> and Chaz? Eight calls. Last one says he's moving on. Maybe you ought to get in touch. No, I think I let him dangle another day. Bobby, be careful here, okay? Listen, honey, I know exactly what I'm doing. How about you? Hmm? What are you doing? Well, you know, same old, same old. Well, how about if I come over a little while? Give you a big hello. You're the one that just got off the plane. Why don't I come see you? Ooh, I like that even better. You just bring it on over, baby. Okay. See you soon. A woman's voice. Should I be jealous? It's my mother. I bet you make a good son. Well, I have my moments. Well, she seems to have done a pretty good job with you. She did teach me one thing. Hmm? See people for who they really are. And who am I? A reporter. Gotcha. You look scared. I'm not. You should be. You should be.
Guess things don't look too good for us. Not necessarily. It's a great company once. Now it's just incredibly corrupt. And Charles Grayson is the problem. Why? The company is its leader, and ours is nothing to be proud of. He's weak. He fights with his brother, cheats on his wife. He's addicted to drugs. And now he's addicted to a very bad woman. I used to idolize Chaz. Now I just put out his fires. What are you trying to tell me, Jim? The story you're writing? Mm -hmm. It's not really about a laptop, is it? It's about certain people in government that do the occasional favor for us, right? Right. How far are you willing to go to get the truth? Whatever it takes. There's some records in Chaz's office that detail all of our transactions with government officials. They're called the Black Files. Why would the company keep records on that? Because well, senators and bureaucrats keep records on us. We're all standing in a gasoline lake. Everybody needs a match. Where do they keep these files? Put it this way. Getting them would be a crime. It would take both of us. That's the best part yet? Hey, I'm not doing this for kicks. I care about the company. If we do this, it's going to be to cleanse Grayson and Grayson, not destroy it. Jim, the truth is the truth. I don't slant it, I just write it. <sighs> Whatever happens to Grayson and Grayson, after the story comes out, is up to you. So where does that leave us? With a lot to think about. <sighs> Better hurry. <laughs> Your mom's waiting. Right. Mrs. Greer. Yes. Mary Gridman, IRS. Can I speak to you? Come in. I understand the snails are in danger and have rights. But we have a contract with the Brazilian government. One moment. Yes? Mr. Grayson, sorry to interrupt. Ms. Dikowski on one. Put it right through. Senior Presidente, I'm sorry I'm gonna have to call you back. Well, to what do I owe the honor? Don't be mad at me, please. I'm not mad, Bobby. I'm just not used to being ignored. I wasn't ignoring you, honey. Believe me. I've just been very confused. I thought if I got away, I could get you out of my heart, out of my mind. But I can't. I just can't. And then when I got home, I got your message about moving on. Is that what you really want? I don't know. Are you all right? I just can't stop crying. Chance, if it's over, I'd understand. I really would, honey. I don't want to lose you, but I don't want to make us both miserable either. I can't do this on the phone. I need to see you. Oh, I don't know, Chaz. I mean, what's really going to change? You don't want to leave your wife, and I don't want to break up a marriage. Bobby. I have to go. I'm sorry. Yeah, hey, darling. Uh, no more calls. Thanks. Eleanor. Hi. <laughs> oh. Mm. Oh, what took you so long? Oh, you don't want to know. <laughs> Come on in. Great. This is nice. According to bank records we obtained, your husband had a great deal of undeclared income last year. Did he? 
He, uh, he did his best to hide it in a series of accounts under various relatives' names. Totals out to $37,000. Every penny comes right back to him. Where'd the money come from? Oh, I don't. I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. Mrs. Greer, you don't work. Your husband makes $81,000 a year. You're telling me that he came into $37,000 and you never knew? Mrs. Greer, please. My husband gambles. He won at the track. I begged him to report, but he just... Bet all his winnings. And now you have no money to pay the taxes or the fines? If we could work out some kind of payment plan. Well, that's not up to me, Mrs. Greer. You'll be contacted by my superior. Excellent work, Gail. Mr. Prophet, are you going to, uh... What I mean is, she's a nice woman. I'm sure she is. Don't worry, it's not her we're after. It's her husband. Do anything about horses? How you doing? Can I read you something? Oh, I'd love it. Now, it's a little clunky, sort of stream of consciousness. I'd been so alone, so without hope. And then she came along. She, Eleanor, my other, yet my same. My reason, my madness, my fire, my ice. Oh. What can I do but fold myself like a paper flower and be grateful? What do you think? Wow, that's amazing. You know, I am so glad you suggested it. I never kept a diary and just let everything spill out before. May I? Yeah. You know, I think you're still holding back a little. I am? Well, this is supposed to be the raw material for, like, you know, poems and stories, right? Mm -hmm. It just seems like everything's here except the passion. Really? Look, I am nowhere near as good a writer as no, you. No, no. But I think you want to capture that feeling, that wildness, that craziness, <laughs> you know. OK, OK, look, I'll tell you what. You talk. All right. No. Yes. No. Come on. Yeah. All you have to do is just talk about us. Well, all right. If it was me writing about you, I'd start with your lips. Hi. Morning. After the other day, I thought maybe you were going to switch to a new place. I was probably a little harsh. No. And I was thinking that, um... Yeah? I would like to have a meal. It's been a while since you've done the social thing, huh? Yes. So I should probably take care of the where and when. That would be fine. All right. I'll let you know. How did you get in here? Security is my specialty, remember? That wasn't the hard part. Hard part was figuring you out. I caught a piece here, a glimpse there. Joanne's files were a big help. She knows a lot about you. Like? Where you're from, what your real name is, how your father died. Of course, she can't prove any of it. Then again, how could she? She doesn't understand you. 
I didn't either until I realized what I'd been feeling all this time. What I really see when I look at you. My other half. All my life I thought that I was alone. But now... We're gonna steal the black files, okay? Yes. And you're gonna write a story that destroys Charles Grayson. Yes. Yeah. And then I'm gonna take over. Yes. But first, tell me what's back there. Back where? I think I know. I can feel it. It's home. Show me. I want to stay here. I want to close my eyes and know that for the first time, I'm not dreaming alone. talk to you about the black files. Senator Rourke on the G&G &G payroll? This is unbelievable. Do I want to know uh, how you got these? Profit set a fire. Oh, my God. Just a little one in a trash can. And I took out the surveillance cameras. Had the whole 26th floor all to myself. And I copied those files, put the originals back in the safe, had time for a mocha. But here's the best part. Profit pinned the fire on an ecology group. Now they're under investigation. What a mind. I'm getting you out just in time. Oh, I'm not getting out just yet. Carol. I have to clean out my office and say my goodbyes. I can't just disappear. I mean, to me, G&G &G is, well, family. <laughs> Watch that door. <laughs> It'll throw you. <laughs> oh. I almost lost my shoe. Here, honey, what? maybe I better die. I think you better. <laughs> Okay. Okay. You do the driving. Okay. I'll do the reclining. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Something happened to Chaz's car tomorrow and he was forced to take his wife's automobile. Who knows what he might find? Chaz, you okay? You sound kind of funny. I'm fine. I just have a busy day ahead. How was your stay in rehab? Great. Ready to get back to it. Talk to Dad. 
Yeah. He was his usual loving, supportive self. Told me no matter how much I keep screwing up, I'll always have a job. Of course, it could be cleaning toilets. Pete, you screw up again. You won't even be doing that. Welcome back. God, it is so good to be home. Honey, fix me a drink. It's a joke. I'm joking. We used to do that, remember? One of us would say something intentionally funny, the other would laugh. I remember. I miss that. Me too. Nora, things are gonna be so good now. All that crap that went on, my jealousy, my drinking, it's over. I want that, I really do. But? <sighs> Nothing. Are you sure? I look at you sometimes. I, I don't know where you are. I'm here. I'm here with you. I want you to be sure, Nora. Really sure. Because once this takeover starts, it's going to get nasty. Between Chaz and the families. If you have any doubts about me or what I want for us, tell me. No. No doubts. I just don't want any secrets between us. You must be starved. I'll go make you something. Pete. I just heard you're leaving. Yeah. When did this happen? Well, I've been thinking about it for a while oh. now. I just don't think I'm built for corporate life, Joanne. It's pretty cutthroat. I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, journalism. Look, if this has anything to do with profit. It does, I but in a good way. I'm not sure I understand. You will. And I think you'll appreciate it. Goodbye, Joanne. Bye. Hi. Hi. I'm glad you're here. There's something I want to show you before I modem it over to the paper. Story? Mm-hmm. I've decided to give it a different slant. Still about G&G's influence over the government. All those black files make for a good read. But the real heart of the piece is how G&G &G is so corrupt. You can thrive here. Don't worry, though. It's a balanced portrait. Everything I could dig up, everything you told me about yourself, even some of that backstory I came across in Joanne's files about your father. Wish she'd been a little more thorough. Murderer reads so much better than alleged murderer. Why are you doing this? I came for the truth, and I got it. And have you filed the truth as yet? No. Then listen to me very carefully. Don't. Or? You're much better off in this world if I'm your friend, Kelly. You're right, but I really want this story, so guess I'll risk it. Oh, come on, Jim. Where pair you and me? And with people like us, it's just a question of who pulls the knife first. You'll be fine. Your survivor. Maybe we'll even team up again sometime, hmm? Now. How about one last time? Right here in the office.
Should I take that as a no? Betrayal. It can take many forms between a man and a woman. Where did you get that? I took your car this morning, remember? I don't suppose you had the grace not to read it. Grace is your specialty, Constance. Just ask Eleanor. I'm glad you found it. I'm glad it's out. We have a lot to discuss, but given our prenuptial agreement, it's probably best done through lawyers who can decide precisely. I know exactly what you're getting at, Chaz, and I'm going to save us both a lot of time and money. I'm leaving. I know that means I give up everything, and that's fine with me, because we never had anything. If you're certain that's what you want. I've never been more certain in my life. Excuse me. Thursday, Lombrosia. Um, I'm gonna have to get back to you. Sure. your watch and shockingly enough I'm right on time. Just one last bit of nastiness from g and The offshore bank they use for the payoffs. I'll add it in tomorrow when I do my rewrites. Carol. Did you read it? It's an incredible piece of work. You should be very proud. But? I'm not running the story. What? I'm killing it. Simon? What are you talking about? Maybe I should explain it. Simon is resigning as editor of the Tribune. Isn't that right, Simon? Yes, that's right. Good. Well, I think there's only one thing left to do, isn't there? You're fired. Thank you. What did you do to him? Simon? Simon has a degenerative gambling disease, Kelly. He, he made a good deal of money last year. But he bet it all, and he lost it. He failed to report to the IRS, and they came to see his wife. It was a real mess. Luckily, I have friends. They took care of it, made sure all his debts were covered. And then I got him this great job at an all-news station, right? It's like triple his current salary and a third the hours, so he gets to spend a lot more time at the track betting on this new racehorse I bought him. It's a beautiful You think quarter. the Trib's the only paper that'll buy this story? The story on G&G? &G, it's going to run. As a matter of fact, I, I have a uh, copy of it right here, if you'd like to peruse it. It's going to be the final story, Simon Biles. This is crap. G&G's commitment to the environment and a more humane corporate environment? Are you kidding me? You know, I think you could be a little bit more constructive. I spent a good deal of time on that. You may be able to stop my story, but you're never going to get me to put my name on this. You like TV. What? TV. Television. Me, personally, I don't. But I do agree there are times when it can be awfully educational. Ah, uh, there we go. A command performance, just for you. This is uh, me and Chaz in the office here. Chaz is pretty good, I think. I'm a little bit stiff, but then I never did like cameras. Enough about me. This is about you, right? I took the surge clips off the video surveillance camera during the fire. What? Is this supposed to scare me? 
show it to the cops? I don't think you want me to do that. Why? Because you don't want them opening that safe? No. You don't. You see, I've told the police that that's where we keep $4 million worth of bearer bonds in that safe. I also told them that those bearer bonds were stolen during the fire. This is a tape of you committing grand theft. Right? Kelly, it's the end of the line, huh? Button up. It's cold. How does it make you feel? When you do this to people? You tell me. We all seek that other. A soulmate. A shadow self with whom we can merge seamlessly. But in that coming together, we risk losing ourselves. God, I missed you. I love you. I love you too. Everything becomes a blur, and we grow afraid. Unsure. Even distrustful. Charles Grayson epitomizes a new kind of leader for the 21st century. Humane enough to never lose sight of the moment, yet always with his eye on the horizon. Now, this is what I call journalism. Good work, Jim. I have to admit I was nervous. Giving her those black files is playing with fire. Well, the bait had to be real or she wouldn't have bit. She's too smart to buy anything else. And the payoff was worth it. I'm gonna have this bronzed. J.S., I got your message. Jim, Jim, would you, uh... Yeah, sure. No, I'm just gonna... I... Is it true? Do you really leave your wife? It's true. <laughs> the danger, of course, is we never know who that other really is, what they want, or the lengths they'll go to to get it. In the end, it's probably best to go your own way. Even though there will be times you long for something else.